Well, still two Koreans, but this time it's a, it's a mid laner and GBM speaks pretty good English and OQ I don't think speaks it very much. So uh, that's gonna be kind of a question for me is, again, how cohesive is this team going to be? Yeah, definitely. I mean, at least, you know, the jungle plus solo lane synergy should be better. Uh, you know, Santora and Quas, GBM can all communicate pretty effectively, uh, but it can be tough, you know, in bot lane for Kiwi Kid and OHQ. We'll see how, how you know, synergized they are, how well they're playing. And similarly, talking about these teams that are sort of half Korean and half NA, we talked about Envy a little bit, and I got to talk to Seraph briefly before the games, and he said we speak like 80% in English, and we talked about Seraph's English is great. Uh, Ninjas is okay, Proxen's is actually pretty weak. So he says, uh, we will sometimes speak in Korean to Proxen. Ninjas' English is good enough that he understands all commands. He'll follow calls, he knows what's going on there. Uh, Proxen's the one that's slightly harder to deal with, but his solo laners can speak his native tongue. So uh, I feel like coordination-wise, Envy are on a pretty good spot. Some, some holes, but I think they can probably manage it. Yeah, uh, I mean, where it gets really tricky is when you have to make the split-second calls in, in hectic team fights and stuff. Can people react? Can they adapt to that? Uh, but so far, we are going to have Ryze and Lucian banned out. No big surprise so far. Lucian has been an absolute terror in both solo coup and competitive play, especially with you know the Black Cleaver buffs, the Black Cleaver Ghost Blade. Uh, Phantom Dancer kind of go-fast build is, sure, is very, absolutely. very powerful. Yeah, Lucian, I think, is definitely a first-pick-worthy champion, and I think Heads and shoulders above all other AD carries in the role, which makes him first pick worthy, makes him band worthy, makes it a very good choice. The Zyra ban, I respect a lot. I'm a huge fan of Zyra support. Yeah. And it's funny because it depends on which kind of player you are. I've seen your entire rune page is Magic Pen and you rush Leandri's Zyra, which is great. I saw that in LCK. And I've seen the like, well, I'll get the upgraded Sight Stone and I'll run a bunch of health and I'll run Magic Resist to be much more defensive. I love the Magic Pen build. Either way, we're not going to see it. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Uh, Zyra, definitely another really strong solo queue performer uh, these days. Can be putting out a huge amount of damage from that support position. Interested to see it uh, banned out, though. You know, it could be a nod to how things have been going in scrims. Uh, we don't really have too much insight into the kind of new NA meta yet. Sure, and it's funny because this split actually NA is pretty much the last of the major regions to play. We've had a couple of weeks over in, in Korea and China, and of course Europe started a couple of days ago. So the NA teams got to watch what was good and then say, do I like this? Do I want to do what Tigers are doing? Okay, I'll join in in the fun. Swain banned out against Energy. I think that's no surprise at all. That's unlucky for Quas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had to expect it coming in though. Yeah. There's almost no world in which I would let Energy pick Quas' Swain. So yeah, yeah. I, I believe that one quite a bit. And they may have not even been going to pick it, right? So it's yeah. one of those things where, respect. yeah, no, for sure. Um, <laughs> this, this may be something that's a bit annoying for energy, may have not disrupted their plans at all. Uh, they're going to take Echo and Azir off the table as their last two bands. Um, we do have both Kindred and Nidalee up, uh, but Energy, having already seen the first jungler locked in, does not have to respond with that Kindred right away if they don't right. want to. Uh, they can just leave it for later in the draft and perhaps pick up, you know, a, a top laner here if they're if they're looking at that Maokai or something like that. I think Maokai is definitely a pretty solid option. Also, you can look at sort of the the bot lane tier list. Mm -hmm. Sivir is up there as well. I like her a lot. And yeah, there's Maokai Sivir. So yeah, already. A, by the way, a wonderful team fight comp. Point and click root and a haste to make sure you get there. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. I mean, we already saw uh, the power of Maokai uh, earlier with the, with those speed ups, you know, in the TSM game. Uh, that was obviously from a zillion, but, a still, karma, but still same same principle applies. All right, so scary things. And we right away have to realize, okay, so you are going to have a good team fight. Quas is going to TP flank us, and they're going in. Nidalee doesn't exactly have the best disengage tool, so Envy already almost on a back foot, you can consider, where they've got to fill that hole in somewhere and make sure that team can stay afloat. Early game pressure, though, can maybe just be enough for you. 24 seconds to go for Envy to make their first few, well, yep. next few choices, I should say. We know what Prox is playing. He's been a good Nidalee player before, but they do the rest of the lineup here. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of options to deal with team fighting. You can try to split them up, go with the split push route. Uh, you can pick dominant lanes, try to take a snowballing uh, gold lead with the early pressure from Nidalee, plus right. something like a Trundle, which already has an inherent lane advantage against the Maokai. If you get enough ahead, sometimes it actually doesn't matter if they have an on paper better team fight. Um, it is looking like it's going to be the Ezreal Karma. Caitlyn was briefly hovered, which I think is actually fantastic into Sivir, and I wouldn't have minded at all. Yeah, I actually thought Caitlyn was a better choice. We yeah. saw him hover right at the end there. I am surprised at this because you're running a very pokey team, and a Karma's not going to make you outrun a Sivir. So unless you add that Zillion or something else crazy, or may maybe Trundle Pillar does it yeah. for you, actually, at the end of the day. But it's a very pokey team, like a team that already wants to go in on you. And to me, that's already very scary. And exactly how is it? 
Ezreal Nidalee going to cut through a Maokai. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is I always do worry for these teams that don't really have the tank killers. When you're picking a, this pokey team into a Maokai, Maokai really doesn't care uh, about poke. Maokai is going to get in your face. We're going to have the TP engages, flash roots, speed ups from Sivir, speed ups even uh, with the health shrine if they do pick in this bard. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways for them to get in. And once you're on top of the Karma, the, the Nidalee, even the Ezreal, all three of these targets are, are super, super squishy. So yeah. uh, we'll see what they're going to do to round out this comp. Well, they, I think Bard would have made sense. It would have made it a bit of a, a better laner, but Alice was going to work out as well. And I like this. Again, Energy continuing along the same path. Plenty of damage up coming in. A great tank wall. They get a counter pick for GBM in case that Karma does get flexed to support. So Energy, I think, with a great champ select so far, clear team fight power. They could use some magic damage, but that's not going to be hard to find with the last pick mid lane. Again, go in, and they've got plenty of champions to, to start those fights off with. Yeah, and I mean, taking away Alistar and Kindred, uh, you know, in, in this late in the draft is, is fantastic. You know, in Korea, these are two champions which are really highly prioritized, and this is something that you would rarely ever see get past the first round. So uh, this is definitely a great draft so far for NRG. They have a very easy to execute team, like kind of team comp here. Exactly. Envy, meanwhile, have actually been happy to like wait and see what's happening. Ezreal does not need to be picked. Saber or Zordi grab. We really only see Ezreal mid, or sorry, Ezreal AD carry at this point. So some of their picks haven't been contested. They're happy to wait and see what goes on. Here's the rest of the lineup. The Trunnel does come in after it all, so he will be one of the disengaged tools. Also, a Sandra coming in. So normally not a big part of a poke composition, which, I mean, maybe it's not anymore. Karma support coming through, but uh, Lissandra to start hard engages on uh, not really that much burst to follow up. Yeah, the Lissandra is a bit of a head scratcher for me. Uh, I think Trunnel makes a lot of sense, obviously, into the Maokai with the early game jungler. This is something that you want to try to get that lane advantage. Uh, the team plan could just be to have the Lissandra roaming around, snowballing side lanes, and maybe to just do 1-3-1 one, one with Lissandra uh, and that Trundle. That's my best guess, because otherwise it is kind of a team fighting champion into this kind of poke disengage type comp. Yeah, well, at the very least, there's plenty of wave clear from these guys. You know, yeah. Sandra, Ezreal, Karma, all are very good at that one. And if Toronto does get the split push advantage, and again, the early Sinidili snowball, these are options. They don't have a dominant bottom lane, but Hey, I mean, if Lissandra's going to ult you, Nidalee's going to make that a pretty easy kill in the mid lane. So I think there are options. It's a bit more individual. And Energy's pick is going to be the Ziggs in the mid lane for GBM. Bring in the cleanse because you have to against Lissandra. But Ziggs can execute turrets, and that's going to be pretty fun, I think. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen this. And I think both the sweet spot on the ultimate is new since we would have last seen this in the LCS, mm -hmm. as well as the turret execute uh, with spot, that yeah. W. So uh, it should be pretty pretty interesting to see how this does play out. Gives them a lot of wave clear. I think that they do want to play for the late game with this sort of team composition. So this is something that really does allow them to kind of turtle it out and, and hang around until that Maokai can get super tanky. So this sounds good. I honestly really like Energy's team comp coming in. It's pretty obvious they want a team fight, but if they can't, well, they've got wave clear amazingly strongly from the mid lane and from the AD carry position. Envy, though, first game of the organization now in the North American LCS. They came in and took over from Renegades, and, well, we'll see if they can have this meteoric rise, and uh, we'll see how good it's going to be. But Champ Select seems to be Energy's favor as we get all the champions locked in and all the players ready to go. We are here for our second best of three of the night, the second match of the North American LCS. As the coaches shake hands, they are ready to get in the rift. And before we do get started, though, you at home, as always, make your voice heard. Send your responses on Twitter. Use hashtag NVWin or hashtag NRGWin to let us know who is poised for a game one victory here in the best of three for who can join TSM in the top of the standings here on Friday night, League of Legends here in the studio. It's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot of fun. Aggressive summoners here for both supports, actually. No one electing to go for that exhaust. And I might have expected exhaust from Kiwi Kid, but maybe they can think they can just straight up fight in lane. Obviously, exhaust is really nice for you know that Nidalee diving in, uh, the Lissandra diving in. So something that they are maybe going to have to worry about a bit later on if that does come into play. Mm -hmm. But obviously, this does give a lot of aggressive potential. You know, if junglers do show up into these lanes, the ignite really does help you get those early kills. Yeah, I think there's some things to talk about here because I want to talk about bot lane summoners a little bit. We have a quick game pause, so we have a bit more time with us on screen and not the players. And the two big things are one, grievous wounds. Now, works on all healing, not just self-healing. So when you're against a Kindred in general, you'll get rid of some of the healing. And when you're against a Summoner heal in general, you'll get rid of some of the healing. So it actually raises the value of Ignite compared to Exhaust, which didn't get any buffs. Yeah. The other thing, though, is Barrier got buffed with a much lower cooldown, and I think more resist. I forget if it did or not, but it's down to a three-minute cooldown compared to, a f I think it's four minutes from heal. 
And I've really liked using Barrier. It's so much health. It's not cut by Ignite or Morella Namacon or Executioner's Calling. And I'd found that really useful, but uh, none of these players are running that. Yeah, um, but sometimes those things can take a while to obviously swing into the meta, and also the move speed I think is something that a lot of the players do like a lot yeah. from heal. Uh, does give you that kind of playmaking ability, and maybe dodge a skill shot, chase someone down. You do see mm -hmm. it used in those ways fairly often. And as far as executioner's calling, I do think that that item is actually incredible now. Right, like, again, so so strong. Exactly, grievous wounds change again affects all healing. Suddenly that item got way way better, and we had seen people start picking it up more. In the spring split, yeah. it was getting more popular over time, but I agree. I think that item is criminally underrated. I think we should be seeing it a bit more often. There's it's no criminal. You hear that, I, players I, at home? I think so. I think you should lose LP if you don't buy that item <laughs> in cases, and that'll probably happen to you. Uh, no Vlad, no Swin in this game. There is a Tron, although there is a Maokai. There is yeah. a Kindred. There is some self-healing to be had. But we are into the game. Here we go. Game one, Envy versus Energy, the first match of the split for these squads. And here we go. Yep, should be a good one. It looks like both teams just kind of spanning out for this line of, of scrimmage start. Going to be uh, just kind of watching all the entrances to their jungle, making sure the other team doesn't really have the opportunity to get in for those deep boards. Yeah, so right now it is just that line of scrimmage. Nothing too special really happening just yet, but we will see the game break apart soon enough. Laud wants to walk in with Hakuho. The nice casual spell feast means the possibility of... Eight free gold, but OQ taking down the Trinket Ward. And it's looking like we are just going to have standard lanes here across the board. So uh, unless someone does decide to rotate up to top, and it actually looks like NRG is doing just that. After killing off the ward, we're seeing a Kiwi Kid and OQ just make their way straight up to top lane. So they're trying to dodge out of this 2v2. They don't want to have Alistar laning against the Karma, and I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I definitely agree. We saw the whole range of support meta, as people like to call it. Well, it turns out range supports beat melee supports. That's the generally the way that duo lanes work right here. But look at this. Envy sniffing it out and making a late run up to the top side of the map. They should not miss really any gold or experience. They definitely want to deal with this. And the funny thing is, Energy thinks that there was going to be a jungle start down here. That's not the case. Kiwi Kid taking a big group of punishment right there. Down low on health. He's not going to have an easy time they laning. They flash for it. Wow. They nice and they're Summoner just heal burn for the move speed, as you had mentioned in the pregame. Yeah, that's pretty brutal start here for NRG. They were already trying to dodge this lane. Now they're starting both uh, with a significant HP deficit, already having used a pot, already having used Summoner Heal, and OQ is going to take even more damage wow. here. He's got to be careful. The Ignite is still available. He's burned his potion another Mystic Shot. Lands, well, what a great start for the Envy bottom lane here. Laden Hakuho, I think probably two of the most overlooked players of the roster. I think they're definitely good, and we'll see if they can keep that going. Obviously, a very fortunate start to have an enemy team face check into you. Uh, I think even I could pull off that kind of damage, but it, this is a great way to start your landing phase and a great way to start your season. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this is going to be pretty brutal for OQ and Kiwi Kid walking back up. Uh, one potion is, is the buy, and they're going to be down on levels. They're already in a lane that they're going to be having a lot of trouble in, and it's going to be bro. Yeah, it is. I'm actually almost a little bit surprised they didn't just swap in the first place, saying, you know what, this lane sucks. We wanted to swap away from it in the first place. We're already back in the fountain. Can we just walk bot lane? You just want to TP top quas, but they didn't go for that. The lineups are matched again. Envy with a very slow push, so there's a... It's funny because his minions will eventually reach energy, but the wave is so big, you can't fight back. If you auto-attack, you pull aggro and get wrecked by the minions, and it'll be a lead for a while for this Envy duo. GBM with a lot of nice poke onto Ninja, though. And it is going to have to be pretty careful here as, as Zig's charged auto attack with that with that passive is, is pretty pretty hefty damage. Definitely agree. And here we see Proxen, judging by the fact that his bot lane or top lane, as you consider, is already winning, trying to push into the jungle. But Santorin farming well enough, and he does get it. That's fine. No steal. Proxen does not steal the red buff away that... Wait. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, Santorin, Santorin has red. I trolled myself for a second, but yeah, Santorin did get it. He got the gold. He got the red buff. We saw Proxen peeking his head into that top lane, saying, hey, OQ, I'm throwing javelins at you. You want to dodge them? You can't. It's from Fog of War. And Kiwi Kid is trying to lick the wounds, toss out the triumphant roars, the reluctant heals. Seraph wants the scuttle, and nope, sorry, buddy. Santorin smites that away. No chance for you. I, I appreciate the thought by the trundle, but it's not going to work out. 
Yeah, and a nice early bounty there from Santorin. So uh, going to be getting that stacking is definitely a pretty big deal, especially if this does go late game. That on-hit damage is, is very significant. We do see that it's going to be an Earth Dragon first off as well, which has been very, very impactful, especially late game for those yeah. objectives, which often do decide games. Getting that Baron, getting that Elder Dragon, being able to secure the turrets as well is massive. So when teams do decide to make the move for that, uh, I'd expect it to try to be contested. And it's interesting, of course, Energy's composition is so good at team fighting. If they can get that Mountain Drake for themselves, that'll be really nice, and they'll crush those turrets and whatnot. But right now, Envy with the small lead. 500 gold right now from the early laning phase, a lot of that being the bot lane, plus 24 for Lod right now. Yeah, this is just brutal, and, and Nidalee keeps poking her head out, making these guys play so scared. If that spear does land, this is a dive that they can execute, so they have to be very, very careful. They know there's a lot of jungle attention. They want to try to snowball their lead in this lane, and OQ and, and Kiwi Kid are going to have to be content to just play it really slowly, try to not let this lead snowball even more. And you can see what they're doing about this. Maokai is walking up to the lane. He's trying to stay in fog, so they don't know the swap is happening, but this is going to be a somewhat of a lane swap from the energy side. There's the Maokai spotted, and he'll be taking over the top lane as the Sivir and Alistair try to run away and head somewhere else. My problem with this is that Trundle is already pushing this wave to the turret, so yeah. now they're giving up even more CS. So not only was your bot lane getting smashed, but now your top laner actually got put at a disadvantage because he had to lose two full waves. And, and Quas was actually up on CS on, on Seraph, so now you threw away the only lane that was winning. The funny thing is, it's actually not even Quas who loses the two waves, because he just ran up top lane and took that anyway. It's it's actually two waves that the team lost that, at this point, is actually OQ's. So he's yeah. getting farther behind, actually. He's just missing that wave entirely, walking back across the map and hoping he gets something to do. This is definitely super rough. A thousand almost now, the gold lead. Envy, honestly, off to a wonderful start. And some of that, yes, is that level one phase check, but they're ballooning that lead even farther. Yeah, and Envy can just answer this, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Ezreal's already heading to bot lane. They had the wave shoved, so they lose nothing, and Energy is just slow pushing it. So it's it's a situation where Envy just has a win-win. Uh, not only do they get the waves pushed in, they soak up all the experience, get all the minions. Now they're able to get bot lane in time to actually answer this as well. So Energy are just going to be a lot of trouble. And if you look at the individual gold, this lead is actually entirely the bot lane. It's a little bit from Hakuho. He's got the Spell Thief's triggers, and that's nice. And even though the Relic Shield cooldown is shorter from Kibu Kid, that's not making up for it. And it's, of course, Lod's plus 20 minions. But you can see top lane, jungle, mid lane, all very, very close to each other. This game right now is just the story of the bot lane, of Lod, hoping to make his mark on the league. And, well, thanks to a good level one and continued pressure, making a mark right now. Yeah, we do have Ninja at level 6, so uh, GBM and Sanhorn have to be a little bit careful oh, around here because Lissandra is, is going to be very scary, but he actually has to sell fall here. Yeah, Ninja took a lot of damage, now wants to go back in on GBM, who is forced to cleanse and flash away. And now the flash from Santorin does not get much done. Flash from Ninja to get away from him, so a trade of summoners, not a bad choice by Santorin. But a pressure lead was out from GBM. Now Kiwi Ken and Oki trying to roam around and make their presence known. Will they get there in time? No, they can't stop Ninja, and that means, well, they missed out 30 seconds or more of this bot lane. That yeah. free CS is 27 gold, that's not worth it. Just a split second too late, now they have Karma harassing them on the way back, as Lot is just going to be shoving this hard in the bot lane, trying to get it to the turret to deny even more CS, so they're going to lose at least a couple more. Lot and, and Hakuo are going to move over here to just poke them out as they come over once again. Nice trinket over the wall, looking for the root on OQ, they're actually going to land that for a bit more damage, and... Well, look at all these minions they're not farming right now. As the cannon goes down, ah, they missed that. They got two caster minions. That was most of a wave. There's another 100 gold down the drain. Energy's bot lane cannot catch a break. Yeah, and the best thing about this for Lon is he has this advantage with a cull and a tier. It's not like he had to invest into an early sheen or anything like that to get this aggressive pressure. He has basically the greediest possible build you could ever have and he has a massive lead with that. Yeah, it's only gonna get worse from here. So, Energy will have to at some point turn it around. Again, I thought their champ select was better, but it might not matter. You can just win lane, win game here. 1,000 is still the gold lead. Blue buff handed over properly to GBM, who is treading water slightly behind Ninja right now, but not terribly so. Seraph, once again, trading blows back and forth with Quas. And though Quas is presently down in farm. Ooh. Oh, we got it. Wow, scumbag Ezreal, Lod, not content to just win bot lane. He's got to win the jungle as well. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's a tilter. Let's be honest. It's the it's worst feeling. Gold from you, given to us. Yeah, I know. Especially the Gromp, which is just such a pain to take early in the game. It's like, oh, finally got it. Nope. Nope. Enjoy your health and mana loss, bro. Yep. And now Procton's up here. Oh, unlucky. Minions are there. Quas trying to blend in with the scenery. Doesn't take a javelin, but still is forced away from. Well, look at this wave he's not farming. There's the cannon minion. There's the caster's going down. He's not in range of a sapling toss yet. It's slowly going away from them. Proxen right now, you're not seeing the lead in the farm from him, but he's been able to deny multiple CS from the top lane and the other top lane from yeah. showing up and saying, hey, don't farm that. I'll kill you. And they say, okay. And it's, it's one of those things when you do have vision control as they have two pink wards in the river top side, they know that uh, energy doesn't have any way to spot Nidalee leaving that lane. Yeah. So they know that he can just poke in and they have to respect it. As soon as he pokes his head out there, throws one spear, they have to be worried that he's just sitting in a bush waiting for them to come off the turret. So you have to bleed more and more CS. And sometimes the, the funniest ganks from Nidalee can be very, very effective where you just walk in a lane, you auto him a couple times, you walk in a lane, you throw a spear, you just go back to farming. If they don't have vision in you, they can't actually go out. They have to respect it and expect that you could still be there. Definitely agree. Yeah, just little red buff javelins, the most annoying way to farm against people. Well, 1,500 now the gold lead. 1,500 at 10 minutes without kills. This was just off of doing better at killing minions. Impressive stuff so far from, again, I'll call them a bit of the underdog team, but I think legitimately in the North American LCS, I could see nine teams reliably making playoffs, and only six are going to. So I think there's, there's a really heavy scrap for who the top teams are, even just in, in pre-game power rankings. And now, Kevin Insul and Envy may be overperforming slightly, and well, so far doing wonderfully. Yeah, definitely. I think that there is going to be a ton of competition this year. I think that uh, the bottom three playoff spots, there's going to be a lot of teams that are vying for those. And these early wins are going to be very important in moving yourselves towards that. So we are going to see a little bit of aggression here from Proxen and Hakuo, but Santorin able to pick up the Wolves and just yep. hop back over there. One thing to keep in mind, though, although it is a bit of a disaster here for energy in the early game, this is only in a, th a thousand gold lead, right? One bad team fight uh, for Envy can turn things completely around. Yeah. Uh, especially when you do consider the fact that Nidalee is not the best team fighter. It's, it's a lot tougher. These champions aren't as strong in just a straight up 5v5. So even though you are at a gold disadvantage as energy, if you can get the proper team fight, if you can get onto the proper targets with that Maokai, with the Alistar, you can blow people up and you can erase that gold lead very quickly. Well, Envy with a nice move finally, 12 minutes into the game, going for the Mountain Drake. I think it's actually my personal favorite Drake, and it's so good late game. It's 10% true damage to epic monsters and turrets, pre-mitigation, by the way. So when you're against like a 100 armor Baron Nasher, it's more like 20% bonus damage for the first stack. Yep. It's actually insane how much you get out of it. It's more than the tooltip says in some ways, depending on how you want to do the math in your head. And look at this, pressure on the bot lane. OQ ulting away so early because, by the way, Here's Proxen. He's again saying, don't you dare farm on your turret. You're not allowed to. And now they do bonus damage to the turret, and it might just die in this push. And not to mention, uh, GBM frantically pinging out Ninja moving down there. Now uh, they have to respect that dive. It's going to be so, so scary when Ninja finally does make his first move uh, on this Lissandra. The roams are very, very strong. So more fear in the hearts now of energy down 2,000 gold. Turrets are all worth 800 gold until you get past the inhibitor line. So it's an easy thing to keep track of now, online internet, as long as you get the local gold, 800 apiece for the first three tiers. And now Seraph once again trying to push down Quas. Seraph has grown this small lead over time. Quas didn't really sacrifice too much when he moved across the map. Those numbers were still pretty close to equal there. And that tiny bit of pressure, most of that from when the dual lanes were up there. But Envy still holding pressure in these lanes. Ninja going equal against GBM, which honestly, I gotta say props to Ninja for that. GBM, one of the, honestly, greats of the last two years in the mid lane, and Ninja holding equal is not a bad thing at all. No, definitely not, and he does have his Rod of Ages, so that's gonna be stacking away. Uh, we do have that Muramana stacking up as well, so uh, a lot of stacking items going on here. Cole gonna cash out in 28 CS. These gold leads are gonna be expanding, if energy doesn't decide to make a move, they have to at some point, you know, just pull the trigger and do something before they get too far behind. Yeah. I do think Sivir, like in a microcosm, Sivir's late game is better than Ezreal. Like yeah. theoretically, the post community could be, well, we just waited around for scaling and eventually we got higher than them. And I think that's actually a possibility for energy as long as they don't bleed out too fast. But the question is, who's got the tourniquet? Who's gonna, who's gonna clot this here? Because they are now down two turrets. They're already down that first dragon. and. 
Uh, I mean, this trend will continue for a while until they do find a way to stand up for themselves. Yeah, I think Energy's late game is fantastic, but I do think that they have to stop giving up these turrets. They have to be in position to defend the turrets. You can't just bleed all this gold because it gets to a certain point where, you know, you're 5,000, 6,000 gold up. All of a sudden, the composition really stops mattering when you have these massive item power spikes above your opponents. So Santorin, though, thankfully for him, has actually picked up three bounties all off scuttles. So yes, yeah. that's, that's pretty nice. Yes. And when you have between zero and two stacks, they will only spawn an enemy razor beak for the scuttles. Uh, that's actually the same in 611. You might have seen that patch note, but that part of it didn't change. Uh, now it's on to all the basic enemy jungle camps, so Raptors and Gromp and Krugs and whatnot. We'll see how lucky he gets with those, but he got the basic three. Now he's got to go up from there, Centaur, and good luck for you. And I just think they're going to give over the Rift Herald buff to Proxen, which generally is something that you do give to the top laner, and unless I'm mistaken, that is actually on Proxen, so pretty strange, especially when Trundle is, is a character that would love to be split pushing. I guess yeah. they just didn't want to move him over there to get it. Uh, but I was looking at some some stats actually about the new Rift Herald and the win rates for it are actually pretty incredible so far uh, across the different pro leagues, you know, LCK, LPL, uh, EU, LCS. It hasn't been taken in a, in a massive percentage of the games, but I believe the overall record is 20 and 5. Uh, so it has a, has a very high win rate. Obviously, it's one of those arguments where... It's a well, win more mechanic. Exactly. You got it because you're winning. You got it because you're already ahead, uh, which is the case in this game. So. Is it actually having that big of an influence? It's hard to say, but it's definitely a nice advantage to have in your pocket, and it's going to give you uh, 20 minutes of this of power. pretty powerful buff. Sure, and, and we can talk about that a little bit as the game is going a bit slow-paced. Uh, well, if you're an early game focused team, as this one kind of is, right? You're playing in Italy, and well, you're against Sivir and Six. Good luck with that. It's a way to cash in your early game lead to yep. like help that sort of transition not be so rough. And, uh, also, for what it's worth, as far as the buff does go, it does work on jungle camp still. The damage reduction is only the champions, but the sort of static shiv type proc you get from running around and attacking does work on everything you auto attack. So it lets procs kill a jungle camp, walk the top lane, hit a turret, feel good about that. So uh, there are still plenty of tools for a jungler, like the mechanics, mechanic wise. So and we'll see if Proxen can use that much more here. If you poke around in the mid lane, as looks like Envy have really made the rotation happen. and. Try to poke this down. Laud on Ezreal running down the river to help make this mid lane turret go down. That seems to be the new goal for these guys. El Ziggs' wave clear is definitely amazing, but a three and a half, nearly 4,000 gold lead. Uh, I think Envy can start really pushing through with that. Yeah, they definitely can. I do think that it's going to be tough if GBM is protected. If he can get those spells out, use them on the minions, clear out those waves pretty quickly, they should be able to keep this turret alive. And as we said, they do kind of have to mark the line in the sand and say, we won't give this up. And I think that the mid lane turret is that. They really can't afford to be giving up any more free turrets, especially not the mid lane one, which kind of unlocks both sides of the jungle. Right. If, if a Ziggs lost his turret without fighting a Baron buff, you're really far behind at that yeah. point. Ziggs is like the king of you can't kill my turret. And, well, that just might be what's happening here in this one. You're seeing the top lane now under pressure. You're seeing Ninja Head up there. We already saw Prox up there as well, try to sweep these out. And Lodge is getting a little bit of chip down on this turret. That Mountain Drake buff definitely helping. Turrets actually have quite a bit more armor in Magic Resist than they did before the 6.9 changes. So that, again, the impact of that 10% true damage actually higher than it would have been in an earlier patch, things like this. So. The Drake definitely coming into effect a little bit here. We'll see if they can get any more of this damage down, but... With Watt having trying. cashed out on his cull, he's actually over 1,500 gold above OQ now, which is a pretty disgusting lead at this point in the game, being you know that full BF above, basically, or, or equivalent. Um, we don't even have a, a full item on OQ yet. Almost 18 minutes in. Oh, nice play right there. Hakuho shielded the cannon minion to make sure it didn't die to the Zig Zolti. It a few more turret shots, and mid lane outer did go down without having to use something like a Baron buff. So Envy continuing to really push forward quite nicely. And here we go. So fortunate, actually, second Mountain Drake, I think, is actually huge for them because at this point, I think they do need to play the Siege game a little bit and, and try to close the game out before the chance of outscaling does happen. They can threaten Dragon 3, they can threaten Baron, they can threaten turrets very quickly now. Yeah, and GBM in the mid lane there just went oom. He actually couldn't clear any more waves, and that's kind of just happening from them getting out-rotated. They're moving back and forth. MB has taken over control of the top side jungle. Uh, they're just moving up the top lane. Ziggs has to try to get up there, and then they had uh, Proxen in the jungle, Ninja in the jungle, kind of threatening this, this cutoff onto GBM. It's harder for him to get back there, so 
it kind of just gets into this situation where you, when you see this much control, it becomes very difficult to get it back. Everywhere is kind of this dark spot on the map. Everywhere feels very dangerous, very scary to go. And what's funny, actually, is look at Santorin's build a little bit, because I, I find it very interesting. Back on TSM, the joke was he's a ward. He's just there to get a sight stone and provide vision for you. He's going to do nothing else. He's not going to kill anyone. He's actually not getting a sight stone. He's got Red Smite into a Maw of Memoria. Yep. So he's actually not providing the same vision that Proxen has, who's, by the way, already had more pressure on the map in on top of outboarding what Santorin's doing here. So you talked about that map control and just all the pressure that Envy has. Well, some that's item choices, a little bit at least, wow. and, and the early game pressure. Look at this, actually. And it... And Athene's picked up by Nidalee. So that's that's pretty interesting. This is oh, basically intended cool. as, as the support item now, but because they're just putting all their eggs in the Let's Siege basket, he's going to be throwing out spears, getting the poke. And what this item actually does is it's 20% of your pre-mitigation damage is saved up as charges. And then when you heal, it expends those. You can get basically this big burst heal. So he's saying, we have two Earth Dragons. We have a big gold lead. We're going to poke them out with spears. I'm going to heal us up, sustain us, and we're just going to stay there and we're going to siege. So I think it's pretty cute. I love it a lot. And it still has that sort of chalice pass. If your mana is yeah. low, you're going to get more mana back. And he's going to have resources to spend to keep his teammates afloat. Definitely like it. Cool stuff here. And this is what I really love about the new season is players that innovate, try new things, do cool stuff. I really, really love that. It's one of my favorite things about League of Legends. And well, Proxen just went up stock in terms of players that I like watching because I love this a lot. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool innovation. Uh, you do obviously give up a lot of damage because yes. it's very low AP. He also has Merc Dread, so he's kind of going the more defensives, more just help the team type option. Um, so we'll see if that does come into effect because as far as 1v1 fights, as far as just zeroing someone out, eliminating them with one spear into that into that pounce takedown, it's going to be a lot harder for him to do that. Yeah, that has to be his job because they do have the Lissandra who would say, hey, let's all go in and kill somebody. And you're right, he might not have those <laughs> tools anymore. Yeah. No Q getting pushed around a little bit. Berserker's Greaves and an Essence Reaver. <laughs> the two and a half completed items of this of lot already. Yeah, he's definitely pretty big. Quick shield from Hakapo. More chip damage going down on that turret. And even Seraph able to poach away some of these jungle camps. So, oof. Yeah, we still at, haven't seen energy do anything good. I mean, GBM is, is basing and mid lane is being shoved in here. They have all the wave control. All these waves are constantly crashing into the turrets. They're getting chip damage. They're poking away at them with the double Earth Dragon. It's doing so much work and eventually energy has to pull the trigger. They have to try something because they're just getting way too far behind gold-wise. I mean, I've seen LCS games where the, the scoreline ends 4-0 to zero in kills when the Nexus dies because they just never found a way in on this one. 21 and a half minutes. I'm going to uh, convincingly say uh, slowest first blood of NALCS Summer Split uh, yeah. 2016. I'm going I'm to say in our sample size of three, that's probably accurate. But here we go. On to Seraph. He's taking plenty of damage. He's ulted in, trying to get his stats back. Nick and Qua small, separating with the pillar. And they will stay undead. Four turrets going down. Lot the split push on the bot side. And yeah, this, this split up gameplay really working for Envy. They couldn't even come close to killing Seraph there, honestly. They got yeah, up to true. about half HP, kind of face checked them. He was completely fine the whole time. He's building for the split push. He's going to be outscaling Quas in this 1v1. Two Mountain Drakes, another inner turret falls. Mm -hmm. It's starting to look really bleak for energy. It is. And next up is going to be Cloud Drake, which I think actually I would almost prefer to have over third mountain, to be honest, just because out rotating is just now it's even better. You kill the turrets fast enough already. Just getting to the middle to bot to middle to top faster. Actually, probably the right choice at that point. And yeah, I think this is looking really good for Envy, something that can definitely build you a lot of confidence. I definitely think that the Air Dragon is something that's pretty underrated. Yeah. I, I don't think that it's as strong as Earth or, or Fire Dragon, um, perhaps even the Water one. I do think it's, it's on the weaker end, but I do think that the movement speed is very, very valuable. You kind of have to look at it like little mini Moby boots, things like that. And it's this extra move speed. And when you look at how highly pros actually value move speed with things like early Swifties on even 80 carries first buy you see stuff like that yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that they don't seem to think that there's much value in there dragon yeah it's funny because we have uh, stats from just basic ranked play uh, and the win rates of all the dragons are actually pretty close together they're, they're and then you consider well then you go into professional play where rotations are more important and it's like that actually probably buffs what what Cloud Drake is actually worth, and mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see as we get more and more games, and thankfully now all the leagues are playing best ofs uh, in a number greater than one, we'll actually have a pretty high sample of games, and I am curious to see, like, in professional play, what does come out as more contested, more more popular, more powerful.
I do think a lot of it is also just the fact that, like you said, it's so new, right? I remember when they first came out, people were talking about, ooh, Earth Dragon, that sounds worthless. Why would I want that? I want to do damage, right? It's all about the Fire Dragon. And now everyone's like, that Earth Dragon, though, that, yeah. <laughs> that, that one's pretty nasty. <laughs> I definitely agree. Yeah. I, it, it feels so good, especially when I learned it was pre-mitigation. Like, oh, that 60 armor turret, that's hilarious. Uh, so, yeah, it, plenty of damage coming out here right now. Four to zero in turrets. Envy just have kept control since before two minutes into the game due to an un unfortunate face check by the energy duo lane, and it's been under control the whole time. Ooh, nice smite. Santorin gets the red buff away. Thank you very much. That is my jungle, don't you dare. Ma completed. Still no upgraded boots. And actually, I'm a little bit surprised to see Ma over Hurricane as well. Just normally attack speed is the more likely build, but he wants to knock it one shot by Alessandra. Bit of pressure in the mid lane. We saw GBM take some damage and Ninja hightailed it out of there. And here we go, onto the Cloud Drake, the third one. That should be going down pretty easily. Proxen and Seraph can have no problem. And the next one is Mountain 3, ouch. So the threat of a Baron is going to be crushing later on in this game. It's already going to be fast. I think at Mountain 3, it's going to be ludicrous. It's going to be so fast, and, and the fact that they already have had consistent jungle control bodes very poorly for energy. I mean, MV can get over there, they can establish control, and, and just try to take out this Baron. Whoa, speaking of taking people out though, Ninja right up at the front lines, and he's going to go down. Actually, first blood goes to energy, and it buys him a bit of time. Sadly, no real objectives to play for for them, but a kill in the mid laner, not bad. Not bad at all, and they need to get these picks. Uh, it's kind of funny that it's 25 minutes in the game. That's first blood. Mm -hmm. Not really something that you would expect, but the kill's going to go on to GBM. Definitely a guy that you would love to have that extra gold on. He does have two completed items now. He's farming pretty well, and he's going to be the guy that a lot of the hopes are, are riding on the shoulders of for this game because he needs to stall it out for, honestly, a ridiculously long time if they want to win this game. Yeah, they definitely need their, their items to catch up. Sivir's still not on a two-item spike. 26 minutes in, she needs that static shiv to be able to actually put out some real team fight damage here and start cutting through the, the multiple squishes of Envy. And we're going to see Ninja. What a oh. great play by Kiwi Kid. Yeah, really nice flash combo there. Interrupting the claw. He couldn't take it. Self fall comes out. Ninja knows he's going down. It doesn't bother to blow Summoner. Smart call there, but really great play for Kiwi Kid. Super slick by him. So there you go, Kiwi. He's had so many game-saving Alistair plays. I remember we like play the relegation clip from like, yeah. I think it was against like Fusion in game Pulverize. five from like way, way back when. Yeah, and it's like, well, here you go, Kiwi Kid. Back on the Alistair. He used to be known for his Annie, having another champion you can just like flash stun people on. And the question was, yeah, is, is Kiwi Kid good enough to play in this roster? Every pretty much every single other person on that lineup has like a lot of respect. People mm -hmm. love Quas, people love GBM, people love OQ. And Centauran and Kiwi Kid are kind of the guys who are doing the redemption story. Where Centauran was the like much maligned player on TSM and Kiwi Kid, it's like, well, I mean, you've been in relegations like 17 times. But he kept making it back in. But I, he, except for that one time. And he gets except back up to the LCS time. team, right? So uh, It's like they always say, you're winning until you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Great things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do see them posturing a little bit here around Baron. Energy wants to pick up the scuttle. They want to maintain vision so that they can see if Envy's going to go for, for a sneak on this. <laughs> Proxim with a swing and a miss, but he's got it. That's, That's not even counts. a skill shot. Scuttle still dodges it. I thought we were moved out in the game. On. He's going it's fast. still in. Yeah. Oh, GBM's on a good spot. Seraph takes him down in the mid lane. He did not respect the damage output there. A pillar, I think, was sick. And that's mid lane tier two gone. And they're going to move straight over towards Baron. You can see him pinging it out already. Uh, and this is exactly what Envy wants. The Karma Shield even getting over there. Mantra being popped to move very, very quickly. And Kiwi Kid may be caught. Oh, yeah, he is just chaining Ults onto him. His flash was down. They just burn him down through the ultimate. Of course, at lower ranks, it is weaker than it was before, and that was still rank one unbreakable will. And here they go in for the Baron. They're going to kill it so fast. No mid laner, no support. Santorin is around, though. The question is, can they zone him out? Sarah puts a pillar in, but he can't do anything else here in this one. I think will Santorin's got to try. I think if they he lose this, they to. lose the game. Ninja wants in, though. Makes him pop lambs for spite. They're just going to wait it out. They are going to wait it out. He jumps out of his own circle, and now, uh-oh, Seraph kind of stuck in the pit, but he's going to get enough damage down. There we go. Blue team has slain Baron Nasher successfully. Well done by Envy. Good picks, good capitalization. Yeah, great play by MV. They waited it out. They know that Santorum wanted to go for it. It was the desperation play. The ult gets popped. They stop the damage. They wait for that to expire. Santorum has no choice but to leave. And Broxen secures the early Baron. And a massive gold lead has ballooned here for Envy. A 52,000 gold to the 41k of energy. Yeah.
Ten and a half thousand, definitely quite nice for them. They've got Baron buff on everybody. Don't mind the graphics saying active on 105. It's definitely the whole team here. And in the new season, or the new split, I should say, uh, Baron lasts three and a half minutes now. There's more time to work with. It will overlap with this fourth dragon spawning, so they can even stack that up on top of everything else. And it's going to be all kinds of scary and crazy. The siege power, you thought it was harsh with Baron itself. How about 30% true damage to turrets? The item breakpoints on these characters really do tell the story of this game. I mean, look at the Ezreal. You have three and a half items. He has a Last Whisper on top of three full completed items to two and not even a Last Whisper on OQ. OQ is just really in the struggle this game compared to Laud. We even have Void Staff coming in now for a Ninja. We have a completed Abyssal here uh, for Prox and Seraph picking up a GA, kind of smelling blood in the water and just looking to finish things off. Yeah, yeah, the Riley is slow with Leandri's, not Leandri's, sorry, uh, the Runic Echo is definitely one of the craziest things. Just the AoE slow is nice. There we go, top lane goes down, good split pushing by Ninja. Of course, he chops those down fast with the Baron and the two dragons, and now we're seeing just this map is controlled by Envy right now. Proxen taking a blue buff away solo, walking back into the bot lane here. Lod playing the poke game, and look how much damage Santorin took for what I'm pretty sure was just a single Mystic shot out of Ezreal. Takes a Javelin to a nearby minion as well, and slowly but surely, these things are getting worn down. This really feels to me like energy is just playing to not lose. They, they were not playing this game to win. They're playing this game to basically just stay alive, to not take any risks. And when you do that against a team that's consistently taking the objectives, taking down turrets, it's just putting them at such a big disadvantage that it doesn't matter when they actually do find that perfect fight. It's not perfect anymore because you're down 10,000 gold. Yeah, absolutely not. But at some point, Quas has to go for the TP plane. He's going to go for it right now. Ah, Kiwi Kid goes in. Big burst of damage, but they all dodge away from the ulti out of the Ziggs. Quas now stuck in the front lines, and he's suddenly running out of health really fast. He's stuck in there with Envy, goes down, can't be saved by Santorin, but here comes the flank. Mid laner's already dead. Santorin's next up, a three for a zero. Make that an easy fight right now for Envy as they push into the mid lane. Yeah, with Baron buff still active, this could theoretically actually be the game if they want to go for it. I don't know that they're going to want to risk that with another dragon already active, um, but theoretically they could do it, and they're punching through these turrets really fast. They have 30 seconds on top of these two stacked up mountain drakes. I think they can go for the win right now. Yeah. Only the bottom lane against five people with a bunch of shields and a That's bunch of it. heals. They're going to go for that win in their first game in the North American LCS. Envy take down energy, only giving up a single kill the whole time. Nearly a perfect game to start your season in North America. Not bad, not bad at all. I mean, they didn't even give up a turret. That one kills the soul blemish. They would have had a perfect game. And if you're energy, that has to be pretty demoralizing. That game was, was brutal. It was brutal. I mean, you think about Spring Split Energy, and it's like, all right, yeah, you've got Impact, you've got GBM, Altec's really loved as well. Like, this team should be super sick. Yep. You know, Moon was hot coming out of Challenger. And, and it, well, they had really bad coordination issues. They couldn't get it together. They'd be like, okay, but look at this, though. I mean, they got OQ. Like, oh, this team's going to smash. They got Quas back. Like, this is going to be sick. And they got it. They got massacred. It, it and it's the best of three. We get more games. We get to see what else happens. But that was ugly. It kind of reminded me of some of the dark days of Dignitas where uh, they would get behind and the first fight that they have is inside their base once the game's already over. Yeah. And this was, was tough to watch because energy was just conceding everything. Like, well, we'll just give that up. Okay, we'll just give that up too. Well, we'll just give up three dragons. So we'll just give up all our, all our inner turrets. Right. And at what point do you actually win the game? I mean, what are you going to do now? You're going to turtle in your base for 40 minutes when the other team is a 20,000 gold lead or whatever? Right, yeah. How do you win? Well, and that's the thing is, is I think the game does change a little bit. And I think like if I make my bold meta call right now, the mm -hmm. game becomes more important than it yeah. did in the beginning of 2016 because dragons are pretty much objectively all stronger than before. Yeah. Uh, so if you're giving away control for 30 minutes, well, four dragons is way better than four dragons before. Mm -hmm. In almost all cases, it's just, it's just better. And... Well, you saw what happened. They'd get to smash Baron really fast. They, they played the game. And, and sure, they were up gold anyway. And even without Dragons, they probably would have won. But there's even more tools now to, to crush games out. And But I mean, I think you're right. We never saw that play. We never saw the turnaround. We never saw a cross TP flank once. No one came in and dropped that war to the backside of the duel lane saying, all right, if they come at us because they're pushing all the time when they hit that turret, pop that TP, let's go. Yeah, never came out. The first TP flank is in the game losing fight. So pretty pretty rough first showing there for energy, but it is a best of three. And they do have a couple more games to prove themselves. They do. So we'll see if they can do it or if Envy makes it a 2-0. But for now, let's get some detail on that game and toss it over to the analyst desk.